Hey there, pimple stoppers. In this video, I wanna dive into some new data about whether it's safe for us to continue using benzoyl peroxide containing products. Now, as you may remember in March of 2024 this year, Ballisher released a report that described that when you expose benzoyl peroxide containing products to high temperatures like 50 degrees Celsius, that's 122 degrees Fahrenheit, that they can degrade into benzene. And benzene's a known human carcinogen. It's something that we don't really wanna have around us in the world. And this raised questions about whether it's safe for us to continue using benzoyl peroxide products. Now, I'm not gonna go into the Ballisher report in this video. I've talked about it in other videos on the channel. And if you wanna see a really great review about the science in that report, Michelle Wong, AKA Lab Muffin, has an excellent video on YouTube about it. However, I wanna talk about whether it's actually safe for us to continue using these products. Benzoyl peroxide is a foundational acne treatment. We really don't have a direct alternative to it. There's not something we can just go and substitute instead of benzoyl peroxide. And it's one of our best acne ingredients. It's in a lot of over-the-counter and prescription acne products. So if it's not safe for us to use it, that really has big implications for how we can take care of those with acne. Now, a key limitation of that Ballisher report is that it doesn't actually describe what happens to people who are using benzoyl peroxide products. It talks about what can happen to the products themselves when stored inappropriately at these really high temperatures. What we don't know is if using benzoyl peroxide in a normal way with routine use, does that actually put anyone at risk? And so we have two new studies from a research group that look exactly into this question. The first study uses data from NHANES, and that data set includes blood benzene levels in a variety of people from across the United States population. And so what we can do with this data set is see, do people who use benzoyl peroxide products match them on everything else that might be a risk factor for having benzene, so smoking, so other exposures, demographics, age, all of those things, match them as well as we can with people who aren't using benzoyl peroxide. And when we do that study, we find that those who are using benzoyl peroxide containing products, they are no more likely to have detectable benzene in their blood, and they are no more likely to have higher benzene levels than those who are not. And so these data are reassuring that using benzoyl peroxide containing products in routine fashion, just how most of us are out there doing it in the world, doesn't seem to be associated with an increased risk of having detectable benzene in our bodies or higher levels of benzene in our bodies. We also conducted a study looking at what we care about. Do people who use benzoyl peroxide products have a higher risk of cancer? I mentioned benzene as a potential human carcinogen. It could increase our risk of cancer. And so if it's something that's concerning or dangerous, we'd expect that those who are using benzoyl peroxide products are gonna have a higher risk of cancer down the road than those who are not. So to examine this question, we used the Trinet X data space and found over 25,000 individuals who are using benzoyl peroxide containing products. We, again, we matched them as best we could to people who are the same in every other way possible for risk factors for cancer. And then we followed these individuals for over 10 years and our goal is to see, do people who use the benzoyl peroxide products have a higher risk of any kind of cancer compared to the people who don't? And what, again, we found in this study with over 25,000 individuals who use benzoyl peroxide products matched to 25,000 individuals who do not. There is no increased risk of lymphomas, there is no increased risk of leukemias, and there is no increased risk of solid organ tumors like cancers of the body, like the pancreas or the lung or the colon or anything like that. So in this study, we found no evidence of increased rates of cancer among those who are using benzoyl peroxide containing products. And that was really for any kind of cancer that we could look at. So together, these two studies are very reassuring that use of benzoyl peroxide products under real world conditions, not incubating it under these really high temperatures, just how we use it in our everyday lives, does not seem to be associated with higher levels of detectable benzene in our bodies or higher risk of cancer down the road. So together, again, these are very reassuring findings for those who'd like to continue using benzoyl peroxide containing products. Now, another way to think about this too is that benzene is unfortunately in our world around us. We get exposed to benzene from fuels at the gas stations, from our cars. We get exposed to it from smoke in the air. We get exposed to it from the foods that we eat. And so another way to consider the risk of benzoyl peroxide products is to think about what's the like relative exposure potential of benzene from these compared to just our everyday lives. And if we pick some of the worst products that Ballisher found in their report, that are kind of worse than 85% of the other products they tested, and we just imagine how much actual total benzene are we getting exposed to using these products, 
it's really less than what you'd expect from just turning on, for instance, the gas stove in your house for a minute. So the likely contribution of benzene from these benzoyl peroxide products to risk seems to be very low when we think about it in this kind of theoretical thought experiment way. And then again, we look at the real data, but we actually care about what happens to people. These data, again, seem to support that routine use of benzoyl peroxide products is not associated with harms. So to summarize, I think it likely is safe for us to continue using our benzoyl peroxide containing products. Although we've had these concerns about benzene and the potential risks of benzoyl peroxide products, these data suggest with real world use that it's unlikely to be a clinically meaningful issue. And that's great news for those who want to continue using benzoyl peroxide products since there's really no obvious direct alternative. If we aren't able to use benzoyl peroxide products, we're going to have to do something else. And those other treatments might have their own risk too. That might be oral medications like oral antibiotics, spironolactone, or even isoprenone or Accutane. And those have their own risk too. So it's not just a decision of using benzoyl peroxide or not, it's what are we gonna do instead? And those things have their own risks. And again, I think the data we have so far is increasingly reassuring about the safety of benzoyl peroxide containing products. Now we should still be thoughtful about how we store and handle benzoyl peroxide products. We don't wanna expose them to unnecessarily high temperatures. We wanna be thoughtful about the manufacturing process, how things are shipped to minimize them being exposed to high temperatures, which could increase the risk of having benzene in them. We want to make sure that we're being as safe as possible when we're thinking about treating acne. We also need more data and transparency from Valisher about their findings and any independent verification. And I look forward to hearing anything from the FDA about their thoughts on this matter as they go through all of these data. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please give it a like so we can make sure we share it with those in the community. In addition, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with the latest on acne and rosacea content. Ask me your questions about acting in the comments below. And until next time, see ya.